Greetings, let's make some charts. I'm gonna show you how to make some bar charts and some pie charts in Google Sheets. It is one of the uh, easiest things to do, but some of the menu options can be tricky, so follow along to the end. I'm gonna walk through all of them and hopefully make it a little bit easier for you to navigate. For this, I have got a data set from Kaggle and the link for that is in the spreadsheet, which is linked in the description below. You can pull this up and check it out while you're watching or afterwards. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do is actually create a filter view. This is going to make sorting our data in our charts a little bit easier when we get to that point. So I'm going to go to A2, which is where the first header is in my table. I'm going to hold down Control Shift and then press the down arrow. And then I'm going to press the right arrow. And that's just going to effectively highlight my entire chart data because it's 16,000 plus uh, rows here. Now I'm going to come up here and I'm going to go data, create a filter, and this will uh, press control home and go back to the top. This will create filters up here on all of these headers so that we can use that uh, here in a few minutes. Now uh, to create a chart, it is also pretty simple. Go to insert chart. You can highlight the range that you want to use for the data range, or you can just click that and then modify it here. I'm going to go A2 through K. That's going to bring in this entire range, K16,602. Um, curiously, you cannot enter a named range here. So if I had named my whole chart range, which I will often do to make functions a lot easier to work with, uh, you can't use that in the Google Sheets charts. I'm not sure why that is, but maybe they'll fix that one day. Okay, first thing we want to do is select our chart type. So we've got a bunch of types here. It has already got column selected. That's the one that we're going to use for the first example. We're going to say stacking none, and uh, then we're going to go down here to the X axes. And uh, let's go genre first. So that's going to bring in all the genres down here on the bottom. We're going to go aggregate because we don't want every single occurrence of each of those as an entry on our chart. We want the total sum of those. And then for the series, we're going to go genre by, let's look at North American sales. Now this is going to give us the uh, respective number of sales per genre, and we can see that in North America, no surprise, action games and sports games seem to dominate the field. If we'll go over here and click Japanese, I bet it'll be role-playing, and yeah, by an arm and a leg, role-playing games, and then followed by action, sports, and platformers. So this is an easy way to visualize a ton of data here and get some insights from it. We're not going to look through those 16,000 rows of data manually. We want a chart to do that for us. Okay, um, moving down, we are going to not do anything else to the main uh, setup of this chart. But if you go to the Customize button, we can now change all sorts of things. We can change the chart style. We can give it a background color. We can give it a border color. We can make it 3D, so we've got this 3D effect going on. Closing that, we can go down to chart axis and title, or chart and axis titles. We can give it a chart title. This will be uh, what genre by sales. So this subtitle could be North American or America. Okay. Uh, ba -ba. Up here on the chart style, I'll actually change this font to Roboto. So this is how you can change the font. Also, curiously, these are the fonts you're stuck with. You cannot choose uh, one of the scads of fonts like you can over here in the actual Google main Google Sheet, uh, where you have tons of selections. But, you know, minor inconvenience there. Oh, incidentally, if you ever click out of that and you need to go back to edit the chart, you can do it a couple ways. You can right click on it and select what you want to edit, or you can click these uh, little three dots, edit chart, and it'll pop back up over here. So we'll go back to our customization. Uh, let's go ahead and make this a bold subtitle and a bold main title, and we'll actually give it some italics on our subtitle. That looks fine to me. 
Uh, moving down then, we've got the horizontal axis title and we'll put genres there. And then vertical, this will be sales in millions. Boom, and that will pop up on the vertical axes. Now we're on series and you can actually customize if you have multiple series, you can do each one of them here. But um, if you wanted to change the fill color, for instance, make that a darker, uh, darker blue there. If you wanted to change the line color, I think this actually affects. Yeah, we're going to not do that. It affects that outward box on the front of the 3D and it just looks kind of funky. Uh, so we'll remove that. Uh, but I did like the fill color, so we'll put that back on. Okay. Several other options there if you want to change anything else. If you needed a trend line for something, which we don't for our data set here, you can add a trend line, data labels, error bars, all sorts of stuff. Then we have legend, and uh, this will, uh, you can reposition that if you need multiple series to be identified in a legend. You can uh, position that as you will. We don't need a legend for this chart, so I'm going to leave that blank. Horizontal axes. So we can change, uh, you know, everything about this horizontal axis. We can uh, bolden it, uh, make it italics also. We can, I don't know, put it at a 60 degree angle. Um, you change the slant on that. Just some options. Same thing here on the vertical axis. And uh, we don't really need to do any of that, but just showing you how it works. Uh, we can also change the grid lines. So we've got major grid lines. We can toggle those on and off. Uh, I definitely think we need some on. We can even put minor grid lines if you needed some more granular visuals on the data. You can change the color of these. It's going to default to something that's pretty legible out of the gate. You know, we can change this to something obnoxious if we want. That's well, not super obnoxious. We'll leave it. Then uh, we can change major ticks and minor ticks. That's the uh, little tick marks over here on the actual vertical axis itself. I'm going to leave those off. I don't really want them on there. So a uh, number of options to customize this. And finally, once you're done customizing it, we can reposition the chart anywhere we want in our data, or I'll go you one further. We can click these little bars here, or um, yeah, I guess you do have to click it. I didn't, I thought you could right click. Click those three little uh, dots. Then you can say move to own sheet and check that out. It's gonna create a chart sheet where it's got this whole chart in its dedicated place here. So there's a whole chart sheet, and then we can come back to this sheet and do more stuff to our data, create more charts. And that's exactly what we're gonna do. Let's go back through that again in a little bit less detail. Creating chart, we're gonna use a two through K. This time we're gonna create a pie chart. We'll do 3D pie chart, because I like it. Um, we are going to use uh, as our label. What are we going to do this time? Global sales by platform. So let's go platform, global sales. And then we definitely want to aggregate this. And voila. Now we have by platform the global sales broken down to where we can see who's got the largest chunk of the pie. And over here, we we'll see it's PlayStation 2. Good old PS2. Uh, PS3 and the Wii are both neck and neck for second place. Oh, I'm sorry, Xbox 360 second place. Uh, but uh, this breaks down all of those sales. We can edit stuff here if we want to change the background color of that actual chart itself uh, to something like that, and then change the border to something like that just because. We can maximize that to make it really big. I don't really do that as much. I like to keep these reference points uh, with the lines drawn to their respective sections. Pie chart, we can have a few different options here that were not available last time. We can make it a donut chart by making a hole in the middle of it. I'm just going to leave that alone. Slice label, so we can add this and on the bigger sections where there's room to display a label on the actual slice, we can do that. Now for each pie slice, we now have a choice. We can change PlayStation 2's to bright red if we wanted to, or bright yellow. Um, 
we can change the distance from the center. So we can pop the PlayStation 2 out by 25%, 50%, whatever. And we can actually do that with multiple. We can put those all 25% out and just kind of explode the pie chart a little bit like that. Okay. And then moving down to the last thing here, if we need a legend, we can change where it's positioned. So when it when we exploded this, it put it down at the bottom. And if we don't like that, we can put it at the top. We can put it at the left. I'm going to leave it on the left. And actually, we do have a problem here because see when we exploded this, we've got so many options here that it's saying 15 more down there. So I guess that's why when you click auto here, it goes to the bottom because in this way, it does actually expand this whole legend. Kind of silly that I can't uh, expand it when it's on the left or right, but hey, uh, that is a limitation here. Now let's do the same thing we did and move this to its own sheet. Now I've got sales by platform over here and I'll show you one final thing. Uh, you can publish these charts. So if you've got some data that you actually want to publish, we can publish the chart to the web. We can select whichever one we want to. I'm going to say the sales by platform and check this out. It's going to publish as a link. I'm going to open an incognito window and show you that when you go to that link, it is going to pop that chart up and uh, this will refresh like every five minutes, I believe, is how Google Sheets does it. Um, so you can have a live, um, live ish chart that is publicly hosted here from your Google Sheet. The other way to do this, you could uh, embed it as an image, or excuse me, you could publish it as an image. And we're going to open this back up and see what that looks like now. Now it's just an image rather than here where we have an actual interactable graph. I like the uh, I like the chart here with the interactions better, but you may have a use case where you need just an image. Now, if you ever want to stop publishing this, you can go back to your chart and you can just select stop publishing and that will stop publishing the content that you have selected. And uh, that is that. Now, I almost stopped recording the video without going through the whole reason why we did that filtered range at the uh, top of the video here on the header row. The reason for that is, look at this new chart that I've created. We've got sales, global sales by the year, and the year is aggregated, but it's way out of order. Uh, these years are not in sequential order. That's because Google Sheets is pulling this in the order that they see the year the first times. So 2006 is the first one, followed by 1985, et cetera. And so it, it does aggregate them, but it, it orders them just by first appearance. Well, we don't want that in a case of a chart like this. So what we can do is sort A to Z, the original data set, and we will get this chart now in order by the year. Now, this is good. However, if we go over to our sales by platform pie chart, this is completely bonkers. Uh, it has screwed this chart up uh, for reasons I actually am uncertain of. The sales by genre is left alone and it is good, but for, for whatever reason, this pie chart is uh, completely bonkers now. So a couple things that you can do here. Uh, you can go back and sort this to the original A to Z range or rank um, over here and go back to our pie chart and we're all good. Or you can create a copy of this data. And look, we can just, actually we don't need to copy like that. We can quite simply duplicate this game data sheet. It's going to take a second because it's such a large sheet with 16,000 plus rows. So now we've got this copy of game data sheet. I'm going to come back to the first game data sheet. I'm going to delete this chart. And uh, that way my copy now can be sorted by year. And that gives me the nice orderly chart here. And it doesn't affect these charts here. Now, this creates two duplicate data sets, so um, that could be problematic. Hopefully, we're not going to be changing the actual data, so um, that, that's another way to get around the problem that we saw there. 
Uh, anyway, that's uh, a couple little quirky things, but that's the reason ultimately that we did those filtering things in the beginning. So hope that clears that up. Now back to the end of the original video. So that's how you make some simple charts in Google Sheets. If you pull up the chart menu again, uh, this is only scratching the surface. There are scads of different chart types available to us. Scatter charts, map charts, every geography charts down here, um, line charts, bar charts, area charts, bunch of stuff to choose from. Uh, these are two of the most popular ones. Hope that this has been helpful for you. Would you please consider subscribing to the channel and clicking like if it has been helpful. Thanks a lot. You're awesome. Bye.